The Widowmaker project has been a bit start-stop. We cleaned up the engine. There was no sand in it. Then we had to strip the engine. Spent a lot of time sandblasting. I kind of look like a Ghostbuster. Painted it. And then I hit the track in my go-kart. Dirty dogs get the dirty results. It's now time to see how this engine comes together. This is the Pellware Garage. Well, we're trying to throw the crankcase back together. Got the balancer shaft to housing here to put together. Got some little retaining tools that I need to use. And this line right here, for me, is a little bit concerning. If you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. Well, I'm probably gonna have to go watch TV then. <laughs> so the crankshaft is obviously the main bit that rotates inside the engine. It goes into the um, bottom castings and the rods connect to that, the pistons connect to the rod, and obviously when the fuel ignites inside the barrel, it pushes the piston and rod down, which turns the crank over. I didn't really pull that apart and pull the rods off because I think it was in good condition, so we just sat it aside, put the crank and rods back into the castings, and basically that's the base that you build the engine from. So we're looking good. We've got the balancer chain on, bolts are torqued up to the correct tension, which is really good. Just gotta get these little um, chain tensioner retainer clips off. So um, using the quick grip here to compress it a little. We should be able to remove it. And then gently put tension onto the chain. Nice. There we go. All done. Good fun. Can't wait to see once I put this together if this thing actually starts and doesn't throw pieces of metal all over the floor. <laughs> Well, we're now up to the camshafts installation. Cam chains, nuts and bolts, O-ring circlips, all that sort of stuff goes somewhere in there. Obviously the location of the cams is pretty important because if you stuff that up, when you put it back together, I'm not even sure if you can put it back together wrong, but hopefully you can't. Um, if it is in the wrong spot, obviously the valves come down and hit the pistons, so everything has to be exactly in the correct location as you install it. decompression is on the top of the cylinder um, got burnt in the fire so I've got a couple of new ones here um, unfortunately because of the cable you can't get the socket on there though I know there's a specialty tool you can get um, from Harley but I don't have access to that at the moment so I've got a cheap socket here from Bunnings I'm gonna hit it with the angle grinder and uh, make a slot up the side so that this goes on we get that change and we get the top covers on the valve train sort of all sorted out and um, the engine will be basically complete, ready to go in the frame. So, out comes the angle grinder. That's what it looks like after I've attacked it with an angle grinder. And this just slips in enough to grab the thread. Good to install them. Got the snap-on torque wrench, which is quite handy because you've got to tighten the head bolts to 24 Newtons I think it is, and then an extra 90 degrees. So thankfully we've got a gauge here that tells us 90 degrees. So here we go, perfect. Two, three, all done. Well here it is, the completed engine. I'm really excited with how it came up. Doesn't it look brand new? Looks like we've gone to the shop and bought a new one, but we haven't. This is the one that we found in the old bike. We've got wrinkle paint on the casings and the barrels and heads, and a bit of uh, gloss and satin black on some of the other components there. So of this engine, everything you see there is off the original Harley and has gone through that process, apart from um, the push rod covers here, uh, the head bolts, which we'll see on the other side, and the sensors and the oil filter. And I've actually used the intake off the second Harley we've got. So everything else is off um, the original bike. We've painted up even the little badges and sanded them down to expose the aluminium underneath. It says Screaming Eagle 110, obviously. And there it is. 
The engine actually looks quite well, as you can see. You can't see it, but it's behind the toolbox. It's actually gone together very well. So after a little bit of time on Google, I found somewhere uh, Bike Magic down there in Moorabbin gave us a hand. Cameraman. Oh, doing the video and that's the one. Yeah. They're really badly bent, so it was wishful thinking that we could actually straighten them and use them. Yeah. The guys pull all the shocks apart, uh, heat them up and try and get them straight again, but the tubes themselves are out of round, so even when you compress the shock, um, it leaks oil. Bike Magic did some magic on our shocks and uh, we weren't actually going to use them but we thought we'd give it a shot because if we can um, use them obviously save us getting used to it. So we go back, worst case we can use these as a setup and uh, you know get the whole bike set up, make sure it works and then get something else but we've still got a, a fair few angles to play with because we've got a bigger wheel and we want to lower the bike closer to the ground so we're going to have to change something to make all that work but we'll go home, chuck them in and see what we've got. So now's really the fun part. It's been good building the engine, but now we get to build the drift trike. Now we're gonna try here, mate, and see if we can use the old shocks, all right? First thing we're gonna do is put them in, because the gearbox and engine sits on top of these. The thing is with a drift trike, you want it to be really low to the ground. And so the Harley's designed to have a fair bit of suspension and movement in the suspension. So this might not work. We might have to replace these with just a solid rod if it's too soft. This looks really heavy. To tell you what, that engine was pretty heavy to, to lift in, but uh, the guys at Harley Heaven down there in Dandenong said you can just sort of grab it and sit it inside the frame, which is the exact method I used. Lex? Yeah? Do you reckon I can lift this? No. Yes, I was very impressed, because that I thought the engine weighed as much as him, but here's a big moment. See if you can even lift it. Well, here's the thing, once I try and lift it and I've got it off those logs, I'm completely committed. He didn't struggle lifting the engine, no. You got it. <laughs> he was in, he, he, I, it sounded like he was in a lot of pain. But he was just trying to lift it. Well, that's heavy. I want to put my arm between it and whatever it hits so it doesn't get scratched. <sighs> oh, that's heavy. <sighs> you can't really crane it in to the frame because of the way that it has to sort of go in sideways. You can't lower it from um, above. So the other thing was I didn't really want to strap it up and try and lift it with the um, crane we've got in here because it'll peel paint off and um, rub on things. So that was the best option. It wasn't too bad. Um, it's one of those things though, you don't know how heavy it is until you've rolled it off the blocks and you're lifting it. So if it was too heavy, it was going to hit the deck. <laughs> Thanks for your help. That's okay. <laughs> you know, I did nothing. It's all right. Where were you when I needed you with your muscles? On the scooter doing burnouts. You might be 18 by the time this is finished and you can ride it. Listen, if this thing starts, I built it. If it doesn't start, you built it, okay? Yeah. Because I don't think it's stuck. Hey. It, it, it'll go, uh, and that's it. You still think it won't run? Yeah. Here's the gearbox. This somewhere fits in here. And now I'm not quite sure on the exact location of the bolts. <laughs> You're funny. That goes somewhere there. Look at this, this is teamwork. So with the second uh, chassis we bought, or frame if you like, with a motorbike, we got some shocks, handlebars, we got the wiring, lumen ECUs, which is a pretty critical part of what we're doing. Um, but we also got the handlebars, forks, and the clamps. Now, we tried to fix the forks, didn't we? We picked them up yesterday. Um, they're not quite ideal, because they were so far bent, uh, they haven't come up perfect. So if you're gonna use this again on the road, you definitely wouldn't use these, you'd get new ones. But I took the um, clamps, 
off the second frame and have a look at this. Have a look how bent it is. That's supposed to be straight and that thick uh, center um, bolt, if you like, is just is bent like a banana. Is it hollow? It's not hollow, it's solid. If you look at it that way, completely bent. Show me. The original burnt one has one of these pins in um, a straighter condition. So I think you actually have to press this out. I've tried bolting it with a hammer and that didn't work. <laughs> so we'll try and press that out and use the other one. But for now, I think we might just put it in and just start to understand all the heights that we've got going on to work out if we can actually use this setup or if we're gonna have to get other shocks or different angled um, clamps or, or what. But um, the other thing I'll show you, because I don't think are you've they, seen it. Are they the things where, where they hold the shocks in? Sure are. Have a look at that. The guys at Harley Heaven Danny Nong have given us a brand new wheel to use. The wheel's actually been a bit of an issue for me trying to find one that will fit into these forks. Um, we've opted to go back to a single disc, so I'm gonna have to work out how to um, delete one of the calipers off the system that we've got and go back to a single disc, which is gonna be plenty enough for us, but that's gonna make it look pretty cool. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah? Ta-da! That's cool. How long did it take you to do this? Well, fairly, fairly quick. <laughs> Time for you to get into it with me though for the next stage and help because we're gonna, everything's just sitting there. So we're now we're just trying to work out where the axle goes, if the forks will work, and then we're gonna start cutting things with a grinder, getting the SIG weld MIG over and start gluing things together with a welder. That's where you come in, you're a good welder. The oil tank used to go here, and we're going to move it back here. Remember, this is where we're going to sit. And then, the pedals normally go in nice and close. I'm going to try and move them out here. So, what I might do is jump up there and sit on it. There's not a lot of space there. <laughs> West Bing Crunch! Ah. What do you think? Get in here, talk to me. That's actually going to go about there. I think what I'm going to have to do is cut more stuff off here with a grinder, move myself back slightly, just slightly, and then maybe move the axle back with me as well. I can probably just do that here, about there. The other thing, Lex, is to make sure it's going to be stable and not tip. So I might have to get a wider axle and just make this a little bit wider. Hmm? All right, your turn. That fuel tank's going to be good enough for about 600 Ks, I reckon, with this thing. Well, that's it. That's how it's going to be, roughly. Okay. We've got plenty of work to do. All the fab work now. And then we've got all the electronics. Then we've got the oil. What do you reckon, Chip? That's good, isn't it? What are we doing next on the drip truck? Probably giving it away to, so to someone to do the electrics and buying off of them again. Do you think they can do the electrics? No. 